All right, guys, today I'll be giving you my top 10 coasters at Dollywood. I rode all 10 coasters, and they have a very strong lineup here. They've got a couple outstanding coasters, and then they got a bunch of really good supporters. A couple coasters that aren't quite up to par with the others, but still, it's a really good collection, especially for only having 10 coasters. So, yeah, let's get right into the list. Coming in at number 10 is Whistle Punk Chaser. Now, this is a basic Zamperla Gravity Coaster. It's a kiddie coaster. It has like a train in the middle, so that's kind of cool. But basically, it's just uncomfortable if you're big. It doesn't pull any forces. Let's move on. Coming in at number 9 is Mystery Mine. I just put up a review for this like a bit ago, and yeah, this ride is so stupid. It's got pretty okay theming i mean it could be a lot better though a lot of the effects felt like they weren't working and i don't know a lot of it feels like kind of on par with a wild mouse if i'm being honest and especially with those restraints being really bulky you really can't get any air time and the hang time you do get on that dive loop is kind of really hindered by the fact that you're just so enclosed by that restraint i guess I don't know, it's it's really a shame, because this thing could be amazing. You know, it's a long ride, it's got really slow ops too, which sucks, but yeah, the drops, they don't really do anything, and the turns, they definitely don't do anything. Again, it feels like, kind of like on par with a, an upgraded Wild Mouse, that's basically what it feels like. So it's a shame that it's not that good, but I don't know, it's number 9, there's definitely a lot better rides in the park. Coming in at number 8 is Blazing Fury. This is a fun little family coaster. It feels more like a dark ride. There's definitely a bunch of dark ride scenes that are pretty fun. And apparently if you sit in the front row, you get a crazy ejector pop. Um, I did not sit in the front. I only sat in the back because I only got one ride on this. But yeah, in the back you get like mild pops of airtime. I mean mild pops of airtime on these three drops. But it's something at least. It's it's more of a compliment to the dark ride portions rather than actual standout moments. But yeah, apparently according to coasters and things, there's a really good pop of airtime if you're in the front. So I definitely got to try that next time I go here. But yeah, Blazing Fury, nice fun family coaster. Number seven is Dragon Flyer, another decent family coaster. This one's got mild positive Gs especially on that first turn, but other than that, it's not very intense. You're not really going to find any airtime. You get a little bit of lift on one of those outer banks, I felt like, but not a whole lot. I rode this twice, once in the front and once in the back, and even on the drop, I couldn't really get anything. But it's still a really fun family coaster. It's definitely the best family invert I've done, although I'll hopefully ride Phoenix at Dino's soon. So we'll see if that can beat this, but yeah, it's not the most impressive thing in the world, but it's definitely fun, definitely worth a ride, assuming it's not a huge weight, which it's definitely a huge weight a good amount of the time. At number six is Fire Chaser Express. This is another amazing family coaster. They got a lot of these here, which is funny because they, they used to not have like any family coasters. Like I remember like the first time Taylor Bybee went here even was 2013, and the only they really didn't have anything besides fam besides Blazing Fury for family coasters. So yeah, they have a lot now with Fire Chaser and the two in Wildwood Grove. So yeah, they definitely have a good family ride collection here, and Fire Chaser is definitely one of the best. It's got an amazing backwards launch. That's definitely my favorite element. That caught me off guard. Yeah, I just love backwards anything. Airtime launches and the way this just throws you forward is really good. You also get a couple good moments of backwards floater. It's nothing strong. It's not Pantheon, that's for sure, but it, it's definitely fun. And you get a couple other moments of airtime throughout the ride. There's great audio, amazing theming, probably the best themed coaster in the park besides Blazing Fury. And even then, like, this is a really well-themed ride. I love this thing. So we've reached the top five. At the number five spot is Wild Eagle. I'm not the biggest new school B&M fan, and this really isn't any exception to that rule. I mean, it's fun. I just really don't like those vests. They 
hinder any airtime you would have gotten. And I could feel you definitely would have come out of your seat a bit on the first drop because the only times I rode this were in the back, the couple times I did, because I knew it probably would be kind of dumb in the front. And the only reason people really ride this, I felt like, was for the first drop, which was good, but really didn't do a whole lot for me, especially compared to another drop coming up later. But anyways, yeah, after the drop, you got some pretty okay inversions. They're definitely a bit more forceful than Gatekeeper, I'd say, which is why I like this slightly more than Gatekeeper, I think. But I don't know, it's close. Neither of them are really the most forceful things in the world, which kind of sucks for me because I want just a crazy intense ride. And this definitely isn't that, but I'd say if you're going from like Fire Chaser Express up to like the top three coasters on this list, like this is a good stepping stone in between those. So it's definitely a fun GP pleasing ride, but not necessarily my favorite. At number four is their newest coaster, Big Bear Mountain. This thing is so much fun. Like, I think this is probably my third favorite family coaster, only behind Oscar's Wacky Taxi, which, I mean, that, that thing really doesn't count as a family coaster. That thing's nuts. And Verbolton, which it's very close with Verbolton. Like, it could alternate on any day because this thing is so much fun. You got three great launches that are actually fairly punchy. You got amazing theming, great onboard audio. I really like that. The music just adds so much. You've got a couple of really fun moments of sideways airtime. It's definitely a good introduction to all sorts of forces. It basically does everything you could want in a perfect family coaster. It's long. It's butter smooth. This is like the smoothest coaster I've ever ridden. Yeah, it's basically the perfect family coaster. I love it. So now we've reached the top three. These are the big three here that I just want to marathon all day. And obviously there's one clear standout that I want to marathon more than the others. But coming in at number three is Tennessee Tornado. This is by far the best arrow looper and probably the best arrow that's not X2 in the world. It's so good. The first drop on this is incredible. It's one of the few elements that actually gives me butterflies still. So that's actually really good. Plus you're dropping into a tunnel and then you also have three amazing inversions. You definitely gray out at the valley of the second one and the third one, the second vertical loop and the sidewinder to be exact. You have another random airtime pop into the brake run. That's really fun. And I don't know, it's a really short ride, but the pacing is incredible on this. You never slow down. And that's why it's my number three coaster here and a top 40 coaster overall for me. Now, coming in at the number two spot, a lot of people have been calling this the number one coaster here this year. I definitely disagree with that, but it's still great. It's Thunderhead. I used to really not like GCIs. Mystic Timbers was a huge letdown for me, but th this ride was so good. You got great ejector airtime combined with great laterals, sometimes simultaneously. So that was really nice. It was smooth, but not too smooth. So that's definitely nice to see on a wooden coaster. You don't want it to be butter smooth, in my opinion. This thing also has amazing pacing. It really just never lets up until the brakes. I definitely really like the front row on this. I feel like the airtime moments are stronger up there. Of course, the sense of speed and everything's great. I didn't get a night ride on this, unfortunately. There's only... One ride on this list that I got a night ride on, and I'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, overall, yeah, Thunderhead's an amazing ride. Definitely not the best ride in the park, not even close actually, but it's still probably a top 20 coaster for me. So that leaves us with one coaster, and that is, of course, Lightning Rod. Th this ride's just pretty much perfect for what it is. If it was a bit longer, it'd pretty easily be my number one. Like overall, it's super unreliable. It's an absolute nightmare to get on. Actually, the first time I rode this, like, I've never been more scared for a coaster in my life than this, but it was because of the fact that I didn't want to roll back. I didn't want to miss this. So that entire time on the launch, I was just saying, don't roll back. And then once we finally got over the dolly, it, it was all over from there. This is an easy top three coaster overall for me. The pacing is the best on any coaster I've ridden. It is phenomenal. The airtime is pretty much perfect, especially on the quad down. It's got a little pothole, but like, come on, just 
if you can't handle a little pothole, I don't know what to tell you. Like, this thing's pretty much perfect. If it was a bit longer, it'd pretty handily be my number one. And especially at night, like, my front row night ride on this might be the best coaster ride I've had, period. So that's my top 10 coasters at Dollywood. Let me know what you guys saw of this list down in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.